With all the talk recently about how expensive certain Rocket League coaching courses are, I wanted to release a coaching session I did with Esports Tower for free, where I covered an insane game I had a couple months ago. And I want to make it clear, coaching is still a valuable tool for those looking for higher level perspective. But there is no reason to spend over $1,000 on a course when there's plenty of free material online. I already talk a lot about my decision making in game in my videos, but this game I had back in January is genuinely one of the craziest games with a ton of offense and defense from both teams, with every player having over a thousand points. I hope you guys enjoy the session and I think you'll find some value from it. Okay, so this is a game that happened uh, January 16th, so a, a couple months ago now, um, but it was against Zanil and Justice and I have Cam on my team, very high level player. All these guys are very, very, very high level. Uh, all have been kind of in the, the realm of the pro scene. Um, you know, I've been high level top 100 for quite a while. Even still, after uh, retiring, I've been kind of sticking with the players, and that's based on my philosophy and how on how I play. And so, even from this uh, very start here, I'm making touches that are trying to make it very uncomfortable. You can see here off this touch, um, I see Cam is on the backboard right here, so I know that I have to either decide to wrap back, or if I know that I can beat Zanil, who's challenging this ball right here, as the ball is traveling down to the ground. I'm going to try and make a, a disruptive touch because I know Justice is out of the play. I see he's landing. So I know the only one in question right now is me versus Zanil. And with the ball traveling towards me, I already know that I'm going to beat Zanil on this touch. So that's why I go on the decision to turn in. And what I'm trying to do is aim for a touch that hits anywhere on this curve. If I hit this ramp, it's going to bounce the ball upwards. The thing that I don't want to do is I, wanna, I don't want to hit it off this wall right here so it bounces back in a mid because if Zanil recognizes that I'm beating him, then what he'll do is he'll just wait for me patiently to hit the ball off the wall and then it'll give him a free touch uh, down the field. So I'm trying to make a disruptive touch here to give me as much time for, for Cam to get back. And you see he tries to also uh, disrupt the play. Right here I'm faking the ball because I know Zanil has the ball uh, possession. And in doing so he does drop the ball to the side which gives me enough time to get the boost. So I know I've given a lot of information already in the last few seconds and we haven't gone through too much of the gameplay, only 17 seconds. But it's all these little micro decisions that you're going to be thinking about. The more you can be active on your defense and your offense and the way that you're thinking and the decision making, um, the better. Right here, I'm trying to force the ball. And I actually end up backflipping by accident with my double jump. Um, but in doing so, it does force Sunil into a play where he tries to force the ball. It ends up actually working out pretty well for us and we get an open goal. So great save from Cam. And even though my positioning there wasn't... It wasn't uh, wasn't actually attacking the ball. I still forced the play and tried to get involved as fast as possible. I get chip here and I'm already immediately trying to go for a line for pads. I know this ball is going to bounce off the sidewall here. And I see that Zanil's probably racing for this back boost. So in doing so, I know I don't need to make a touch at any point yet. I'm going to stay patient, lead myself up around the boost. That way I have uh, 39. And so you can see here as we go into this play, I'm going to have a lot of space and a lot of boost to stay with this ball and I go for an immediate chip. I could have made this a little bit stronger to the farther side, but in doing so, I know Zanil is going to have to clear this across because I'm sure that Cam positioning in mid here is going to be looming for any immediate catch. And also if he tries to catch this, I can maybe come in and make an attack. So I already know from this touch that I've made, it's either a goal, number one, or number two, it's going over here. So those are my two options. If it's a goal, if it's a goal, I should still be positioning as well as I can for anything that could happen. So two is the only option that I can really see being a realistic choice for Zanil. And in doing so, he does clear it over to the other side. Um, and we see Justice is also ready there to catch that potentially. Um, you can see it pops up. And I'm able to go for the back corner boost. Cam is challenging. And so now I see a free ball once again. The way that Zanil is falling, I know that he has to use way too much boost to even get close to this. And he's not moving fast enough. And that's just a, a game knowledge thing. If you know that you have space... Uh, on this ball to attack, I would turn it immediately and try to make it go around him. And once again, I have space here. Cam actually ends up faking it for my top right shot, and it's saved. You can see this is a very high-level game. People are all over the place. Right here, I'm going to try and get in the way for Cam. Uh, pop, pop it across, because there's a potential air dribble bomb coming in. Follow up on the touch. I'm not going to slow it down all the time and explain every little thing, but it's constantly, like, I'm constantly evaluating all my positions, all the options. Like, right here in this position, I see a couple things happening. I, I see that Zanil could beat Cam on this ball, and it clears over to the side. So I'm going to still stay positioned for that that option. Option number two uh, is that Cam does successfully get the flick, and it goes top corner. In that position, Justice will probably clear it to the left. So I'm split between two decisions right now. I'm split between the fact that it could go uh, right from Zanil's clear, or it could go towards the net, and Justice gets the clear. Option number three is it bounces off the backboard. So there's no reason for me to chase my card any direction right now because all of them could be uh, 
possible right now. So I'm sitting in a decent position on the field. You do not want to be too close to the offensive play because you don't want to be the one cut out of position, especially when uh, anything that happens with Cam, even if he gets cut, cut off, right? His car is going to be in momentum towards the back wall. So no matter what, I have to be covering all those options. And so in doing so, I'm just going to kind of sit and wait for the option. I see that Justice is there. It pinches around. And now's my chance to go for a back corner possession play. There could have been maybe a chance where I go for that mid boost to secure it because I know that Zanil's going to be chasing me in the corner. But it's not the, the worst situation. I know that this boost, though, won't really respawn in time. So I'm just going to try and play for this boost now after taping it in the corner, pop it around Zanil, and try to get a 50 of, sort, of some sort. Cam gets a good clear. I immediately see that uh, Justice is going to try and get the, the mid boost. And when I say see, I'm hearing. I'm using my audio. So it's really important to play with game audio because those kind of things are going to be uh, important. I go for the mid boost immediately because I know that Zanil has possession in the corner. I take Justice's boost. And what I'm trying to do is just force a ball in some situation. I back out. Cam shot isn't the greatest. It goes in the ceiling. So I'm going to position as if I'm going to go for this, which forces Zanil into an awkward position. And you can see he's a little bit awkward. Now Cam goes for it. And once again, Cam has done a good job of forcing this to give me a good position. I'm going to fake the clear immediately. And uh, this is a kind of a, a really good play. If someone's going to chase you, hooking wide here is going to make uh, Zanil feel like I'm going to go for a chip. You can see how dangerous this looks. Like it looks like to me from this position that I'm going to hook really wide here and chip the ball into mid. So he doesn't challenge. He doesn't go into the corner. He doesn't want to overcommit. And that what that does is it gives me a free uh, boost in the corner. It's such a, m a minuscule thing. It's such a small little uh, positioning change. But if we were if we were in uh, Zanil's um, if we were in Zanil's POV here and I'm near the ball and not hooking wide here, if I'm just sitting right here, he has full confidence to come in here and challenge this ball because in me being behind the ball, uh, there's nothing I can do except for hit the ball forward, giving some room between me and the ball that's already rolling and giving me a good position. I can use that to my advantage to sort of. Uh, make him second guess if he's going to go in there. So that's kind of a that's kind of why that worked out so well in that corner. It's such a small thing. And it happened within a good one second of the game, but that'll change how players approach you. So right here, I get a touch forward, and I can go for an air uh, air dribble flip reset here. But I, I hear Justice jump already. So in doing so, I'm actually going to fake the flip reset and just boost hard into the the dunk. It ends up chipping far, but there was a good chance that that goes towards target. And right here, I'm going to grab the line of pads. You can see I have 48 now and stay close in the 50. There's no reason to really rush back and go for that corner boost um, because I already know one of those players is going to beat me to it. And now I hear Cam on the ball, so I'm going to get the boost and move forward. We're going to let the game play out a little bit here because we are like moving quite slowly through this, um, but there's a lot of decision making that's going on at every moment. Right here, I'm trying to see what they're going to do. He ends up faking it. Now I'm trying to get in the way of Justice's touch here. It ends up not working. It's actually a really good fake from Zanil because in this position, um, he fakes the ball and tries to go for a bump on me. Uh, and then goes for the bump on Cam. Now, in Cam's POV, this is a tough situation to deal with. I probably should have made at least one touch on the ball. It was a good fake from Zanil, though, to outplay me. And then the bump on, on Cam. So that's going to be, I think, the final goal before the uh, the overtime. I can't remember. I think that is what happens. Um, it's a long overtime and a very competitive... Oh, never mind. I lied. <laughs> okay, so it's, I think it goes 2-2, two to two maybe. Uh, I know that it's an overtime that's quite long. Uh, that's just an open goal uh, from a cheat. Those happen at any level because the ball just randomly spills. I think Cam called the fake. I popped that a little too far so Zanil could make a play. I probably could have chipped this a little more to the left. Uh, but I wanted to keep this uh, not towards the wall because it's very hard for uh, Cam to get an immediate shot. What I'm expecting is that he goes up the wall here. And then I kind of chip it in this location at a decent height where he can shoot it immediately. Um, but I don't hit it uh, exactly how I wanted. I was kind of scared of Justice uh, demoing me because um, he was kind of chasing forward. So I just chipped it immediately, and it still gave Cam a decent chance. He does get a dunk. And right here, I see uh, Justice turning on this. I know that he has the ball first, but I hear Cam already getting behind me, so I'm just going to get in the way as soon as possible. Cam does a backflip, but in doing so, he does relinquish the back corner boost. He has enough boost to make this play, though. Great flip reset. Okay, I lied again. It's not 2-2. Two two. <laughs> Honestly, it's been so long since this replay happened that I have no idea how many goals went in. So it's, it's going to be a mystery to both me and you guys. But once again, it's a good force. I just got to uh, open net there. I, I can go back to the shot placement um, on why that worked. Um, so Cam forces a flip reset into a 50. So right here, I see Justice. He's in a complete standstill. So both options are decent here. Um, he's probably expecting the back because he's a higher level player. And this is kind of a th weird thing about Rocket League is that 
if this was a gold level player or a diamond level player, they might uh, think the shot is coming ahead of them. Um, potentially, who knows? I'm actually playing a reverse psychology here where the back right is technically almost open, but he could backflip this to get towards the ball. In doing so, he probably expects me to go for that because it's a harder shot. And as you can see, he actually backflips or goes backwards. And he's basically a sitting duck at that point. There's so much opening. Uh, there's so much of an opening to shoot wherever you want when someone's at a stationary standstill there. So I just went for the uh, the far left because it takes way too much boost and way too much time to uh, to cover that fast enough. The pop up here is good. I'm just going to pop this behind Zanil so he has to re return the other way. And at this point, I can just go back corner, get the boost. Great cut from Cam. This clear will be uh, left side for Zanil. He has to go for a double touch. So I just kind of sat there waiting for that. And now I'm trying to keep close on this ball. Good 50 once again, just staying close. Looks like Cam wanted it. I wasn't aware of that. If I had comms with Cam, I would have definitely backed off of that. That touch was a little bit too heavy from Zanil, so I'm just going to cut off immediately. I talk a lot about this where I have like this kind of red light, green light situation in my head where uh, it's a constant red light that I'm like, okay, don't go, don't go, don't go. And then the second that I feel I could go, I just fully commit and I do the green light in my head. I'm like, okay, I can go for this now. So I kind of just think about when I can challenge and attack a player. Like right here is a red light, red light, still red light. Now it's a green light because it's close to the ground, but he does a really good dunk. And I probably could have played this a little bit uh, stronger on the 50. I was actually trying to be a little bit too greedy there and play the 50 into the corner where I could just do a heavier uh, 50. You can see that Zinil played that pretty well and stayed away from the ball. Gave some space between him and the ball, which allowed him to get the second touch afterwards. So Cam doesn't get this boost. I'm still going to secure this boost, though. And I'm going to wait for uh, Justice to get the flips. And it's once again, just a great shot. It was a great double flip reset. I probably could have been a little more patient on the backboard, but at that point, you do need to kind of commit and challenge. And uh, once again, another goal. So a couple of mistakes from my from my positioning, just like in hindsight, but it's it's one of those things where the active defense is kind of important to keep in mind because if a player makes a really, really good play, even pros say this, like you're going to be in a position where you kind of have to just respect the shot. Um, if they'd make a good shot and you're going to want to cover the best options right there. I was looking for a bump potential. Um, I can grab the other boost though to recover my boost. Great 50. And a tough angle. I probably should have scored that. Like that was something where I could have taken a little more time. I didn't know how much time I had with justice landing in front of me right there. I could have looped around here and then went for the shot open, but it was a little bit tough because justice was landing here. And if he had boost, he could have maybe demoed me or attacked me. Um, but in hindsight, once again, like with how fast this game is moving, there's going to be like very minute decisions that could have changed. You can see that uh, Justice was pretty close to ready right away. I see that um, there was a potential demo coming out of Zanil. The way his body language on his car here, he wasn't going for the ball at this point. He wasn't really looking to chip it because if he chips it into the corner here, um, Cam gets a free ball and boost. So I really saw uh, a potential demo coming through. And in doing so, I just went right straight, like right straight for the demo. And that ball rolling off the backboard is a safe play. So I'm just going to wait for Cam to air dribble this out. 50 comes through. I'm faking this to see what Justice does on the next touch. It's kind of a weird uh, a, a weird look from me. It looks like I'm misreading. But what I'm trying to do there is force Justice to make another touch. It's a it's a weird little like movement. I know that I'm being beat on this ball too. So I'm just trying to get the boost and secure it. There's just little things that your car your car language will um, you know, completely change how the opponent behaves, how they're going to make the touches, right? So like he was trying to race to that touch on the sidewall. And same here, this touch across, I know that Zanil can't really go for this because it's too close. And the way that uh, Justice is going across the ball here, it's just going to spill the ball across here. So in doing so, I just make sure that I stay with the ball and then I immediately go for the demo to secure the other boost. Now I have space on this ball. Zanil has a teammate respawning, so he can't really um, make anything happen here. Go for a decent challenge. Cam gets a good 50. I see the back corner isn't quite there yet, but now I have it. And I'm trying to cut off the angles. It was it was a good a good attempt from Justice. He could have let the ball roll right here a little more before making that second touch. Because it doesn't let him get enough power on it. But decent option. Right here, I'm just trying to make sure uh, Zeno doesn't turn. You can see there, too, he was ready for this. Like, if I don't follow up this boost and make a touch, he was going to cut that off. And Cam was in a dangerous spot there because he was right underneath me. We've only got a couple seconds left of the uh, the regulation here. And so in doing so, I know that it could be dangerous if we uh, uh, concede. That's a great pass back. Gonna move a backboard, try to follow us up. You can see that there, Justice was in an awkward spot. He couldn't really uh, reliably get this with 15 boosts. That's why I boomed it up backboard. And I knew that Zanil was gonna try and uh, maybe cover this. I played the miss just in case. And I have enough boost to go back down this middle line of pads. 
to be secure in positioning. And right here, I'm going to try and force for Cam once again. It's off the backboard. Not the greatest touch from Daniil, so I'm going to attack it immediately. And I, my timing in my head, this is something to get used to too, is just like I knew when that boost in the back corner was taken. So I knew that like chasing into this corner with the ball is not like the worst situation. And we actually almost score uh, off of this. It just wasn't quite there. I actually honestly think if Cam didn't jump on this this shot, you can see here him jumping, uh, it, it, it pushes the ball here instead of here. And I think that if he didn't jump and the ball was rolling towards him, he could have hit the ball with contact maybe here and it just would have been a goal. So him jumping, I think, was more so just him scared of the 50-50 going off of justice. But he ended up not getting the goal because of the fact that um, he shot uh, the middle of the ball, which lets it fall to the ground. So we could have avoided this seven minute or six minute overtime. I have no idea how long it is, but um, right here, I'm actually just trying to flip towards the ball and just trying to stay in the way. That gives Cam a better option uh, on the ball, but he has to cover this. So he ends up uh, looping back to it. I'm going to try and avoid the demo in case Neil goes for it. Now, I am last man for a, lot, a long time here. I'm going to uh, surprise him, though, with an early attack. And the more that you can get used to those wall, wall shots, um, the way that you want to do this is like the second you jump off the wall, I'm air rolling in a way that I can straighten out my shots. So you see I air roll to the to the left, which then flattens out my car. And I'm going for a corner, a corner read to get the clear. And in doing so, in this position, like if I didn't hit this as far, um, Zanil could have caught this and taken the corner boost. But I know that he has to stay with the ball. And instead, um, uh, I get the ball, the boost, and get to sort of challenge this. And what I was expecting from this in this position for Cam is like he didn't really want to challenge right there because I was still demoed, so he just backs off and they threw away the ball. That was actually like the best case scenario there because like, if if I let the ball go further back here with this touch, which I was hoping it would go further back, Cam could have challenged right away. But unfortunately, because of the spacing, uh, Zanil can stay on this. But unfortunately, his pass, like Zanil's pass, was not good enough to stay with Justice. A good shot to the far side. I was a little bit hesitant for me. I probably could have went off that that challenge immediately. But those ball bounces, like these corner bounces, are awkward because it can sometimes. There's like a weird, you know, there's an edge here where the ball can kind of hit anywhere within this and it changes the trajectory and angle completely. I wasn't confident that it would hit this point, but it ended up doing that. So that's why I waited a little bit. But at that point, if I'm not comfortable with this read, I really should just like force the ball and not jump because I, 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 I know Justice is closer than me, but it doesn't end up being horrible because I can get behind uh, Cam here. That was really dangerous. Um, That could have been really dangerous here, this clear from Cam. Um. I think he could have just not jumped and stayed with the ball. But in doing so, he does end up putting it behind Zanil. But this in this position, it could have been a lot worse because Zanil is waiting for it. But Zanil doesn't react fast enough, so he's too wide on the shot on the ball there. We'll go back to my, my POV here. Good chance for a 1v1. Zanil gets the save. Good demo. Now I know I have space here. I'm going to try and stay close here and just get a couple touches. And then pop to the back corner boost. I, t I take a look quickly to see if Cam's going to go on that ball first. Like, I could have easily been the next player to go on this. A lot of players will turn on that ball. It's a little awkward, but I knew Cam was ready for it. Great 50 as well. I jump up pretty early. I probably could have waited because Zanil was being patient. And right here, I see Cam has the ball. And immediately when I notice he has the ball, I take the boost. Go for a bouncer shot. A good 50. Could have maybe demoed uh, Zanil there. That would have been good. Um, but I was more so focusing on just the starve. And right here, I'm just going to try and dribble it around. Scares Zanil. I was hoping for a low 50. Justice bails him out, though. I'm going to move behind Cam once again. And so what Cam's trying to do here is just force him. He can't really get, like, at this high of a level, players can't really um, reliably get every ball. Like, every ball is not going to be possible. Um, so just, like, forcing could have been a good chance. I knew I had space there because there was a player taking the corner. I didn't get the best clear, but this should give me a time for the boost now because they weren't ready on it. I hear Cam jump, and I got a little scared because I didn't want to commit with him, and then the demo came through. And there's a rule one in the net there. They do end up breaking it, but I cut just in case he was stuck. I see that we're both getting mid-boost, but in that position, we we don't feel like that's that dangerous because like the ball, the way the ball is spilling here, we see the position here. Both players are behind the line of the ball, so in order for them to get uh, back to the ball and return to the net really quickly, they have to boost around the ball. And I know they're both pretty low because they both made an overcommitment play here. So both me and Cam just actually go and secure this boost because Justice right now can take this boost and secure it. And in doing so, he's going to have to loop around and get the ball. So there's enough time. And that's just an internal timing thing, knowing whether or not you have the space. Um, we both grab the mid boost and immediately back off. And the demo is great here. And there's a good chance for a, a mid pass. But Cam decides to go for a solo play because he's got the demo. 
big miss right here. I'm just trying to 50. And even if the ball spills out, you can see we have all the space in the field. They're kind of in a play where they can't really make anything happen. Cam just got mid, so I know you can follow it. I'm going to get the, uh, the the back corner boost. I see Zanil maybe trying to follow this. Wait for the shot. You see how I'm just faking the ball, just putting myself in a position where he thinks I'm going to force it. Puts us in an okay spot because he, he's just playing the ball around. This was an open shot here if I had a little more boost. And once again, I could have chased that corner, uh, but I know that from this, just from experience, that right here, I see Zanil boosting. And that information of him boosting right there, I know he has way more momentum than me. So even if we are at the same space away from this boost back here, he wins. He just wins that and he has the ball. So it, that would be the worst thing for me to do is follow into this corner with no boost. He has full momentum to bring the ball up around the wall. And now I've left my teammate in a 1v2 immediately. So what I what do I do instead? I just go for this back corner or mid. Um, and then this gives me the chance to maybe force something. Right here, I'm trying to like play. It's sort of like this chess game. Like a lot of players, they could just flick this ball immediately. But what does that do? That gives Cam the ball back here to take the ball. So I don't think Zanil's going to do that. And even if he does, that's a decent force for me to go for this. What I'm thinking he's more likely to do is try to fake me. So what I'm going to do is like fake the fake and then I go for the flip. And that's like a high level thing, but just trying to force players. And right there, me jumping at zero boost there isn't the worst because um, I'm making him clear it. And if the pinch play went in, once again, respect. That kind of just happens. Uh, but hopefully Cam's ready for it. Good fake from Cam here to force uh, Zanil off the ball. And he secures the back corner boost. Let's see what he does with this. Goes for a far shot. And now I have possession on this ball. I know I can loop back. Like if Zeno wants this, he's going to be pretty low. I know he's pretty low, so I'm I'm like playing off the fact that Zeno doesn't have much boost. I'm going to wait behind Cam here. Let's stay close to this. Zeno ends up turning on this. I probably could have not chipped this towards the wall. The round should be Cam to catch this. Once again, forcing. Good chip, but Zeno probably will turn on this. He does, and he makes... I think Cam made him panic. I tried to make Zeno panic here with a slow touch and then a follow-up. And the way that I'm flipping into this, like right here, that touch is all with the knowledge that I'm doing that in, in the, with the purpose to follow up the double. Because if I don't, then Justice is going to turn on it. And you can see he was ready for it. I'm going to loop back. Justice has a dribble, but he, he kind of lets go of it with that flip. I'm going to try and go around him. Even the 50 goes pretty poorly. I'm going to try and get a pinch around. That was a really good touch. This is like kind of really high level. But I knew that I can kind of get a pinch play. As you can see, Zanil's trying to go for some sort of uh, catch. And he's playing for best case scenario because the way he's positioning his car really wide like this, when he's flipping into this, he's trying to get some sort of touch that'll roll around here or off the corner. But of course, because Justice is right here going backwards, it's not really going to result in much either way. So I felt like I was pretty safe because um, with my teammate Cam going behind here, um, he can play off of that um, that touch. So I felt like I'd go for this and I ended up getting a pinch around Zanil. He didn't expect it. I see Cam's trying to play patiently around me forcing this back and that's actually a pretty good 50 because it should be cam but unfortunately uh Zanil chased it pretty quickly but it still results in a decent 50 from from cam you can see i'm trying to keep my momentum up hope for a maybe a demo there make the ball awkward i can uh, go all the way back corner here while justice is kind of chasing forward i see the potential 50 and right here this touch right here i'm trying to keep it close to my car i don't end up making the greatest second touch but hopefully that's close enough to cam it's on target but Zanil saves it this boost is going to spawn there it goes trying to wait for that second flip and that's something that you might not see as often in your level but like i at this level you kind of have to expect it you have to expect that people are going to be able to follow up the second flip reset i know cam's dead what i'm trying to do here is try to force up all that i can 50 once again i do it get a double dunk and unfortunately because cam did just spawn he can't follow it up but that was a great outplay on both players I'm trying to fake out zanil try to go for a 50. you can see that a lot of this small ball from everybody is just trying to outplay in these little moments Bit of a misplay from Cam, but I'm going to go for this just to force him. You can see I fake it immediately. Go back to the corner boost. I Once I see that his car is like kind of off target, that touch right there tells me I don't need to go for it anymore. And I just instead go for the back corner boost. Should be a free ball for Cam. They end up both missing. I can't really get enough power on this. So I'm going to keep it close. Get the mid boost. Trying to force 50-50. Trying to bump him a little bit. Great 50 from Cam. We're getting close to the end here. So I don't remember exactly how it ends up. Uh, happening but I was trying to hopefully keep this close enough that I can uh, get the 50 on the next touch but a little ambitious good 50 I see that justice could land on this mid so that's why I'm ready for it 
Force 50, and immediately I see that the ball's gonna bounce off mid. I think Cam should be ready for this. And you can see he has 100 boost, and this is like the best position for him to go on this ball. And he knows he has space, because Justice doesn't really want to challenge him. That's why I went for this mid boost right here, because I'm trying to take it away from Zanil, and potentially take Zanil's back corner as well. So now we know it's basically Cam versus Justice. Zanil went for the other corner boost, and Justice made a really good chip here. Really good challenge. I hear, I hear the double jump from Zanil, even though he was blocked from my view. Like, I'm looking up here, and I no longer see him. Um, I know that I'm hearing him jump, so I'm going to wait for it. That was almost a goal. A little dangerous. Should be Cam, though. Flick. It's saved. Should I go for a top a top bin shot? Ends up almost working because Zanil misses. That touch was not great from Cam because it gives Zanil a chance, but I know that he doesn't have full possession yet. So I'm just going to go for it. Now, I hear Zanil behind me. I'm going to go for a shot far side. Now, I'm the one low boost. Cam is also low boost, but that touch just was given away by Justice. I'm going to clear to the corner side, so hopefully Cam can follow it up. I was hoping that he could get a clear, and that's exactly what happened. So it was played pretty well. My intentions were clear. Cam's intentions were clear, and there's the open goal. So that's the whole game. I know a lot happened, and that was uh, a lot of, uh, you know, misses and a lot of whiffs, like even at the highest level. Um, but that's part of the game. Like with how fast it moves, it's hard to uh, really catch everything and make sure you're playing completely perfectly. But the more the more that you can catch those mistakes and the more you can mitigate mistakes, the better you'll be playing. So. Well, thank you so much, Lathamir. Uh, that was really insightful for throughout the entire replay. And um, thank you so much for your time and your value add for the day towards all the amazing people we have in the audience today.